while Shungile rests, our lions have been very busy. And you can see the injuries on this buffalo's shoulder. And it just goes to show how sharp those lion's claws are. Because buffalo skin is unbelievably tough. And yet, that when they jump onto the back of a buffalo like that, that is how they manage to stay on. By digging the claws into the flesh of the buffalo's shoulder. And it's a very intense and very difficult thing to watch lions hunting a buffalo. We've seen quite a few of the buffalo hunts live. And it always takes quite an extended period of time with these old bulls and I've just been thinking actually about Derek and Beverly Joubert who of course are acclaimed documentary makers, photographers and conservationists and they had a truly unfortunate incident with a buffalo in their camp that both of them were very lucky to be able to walk away from albeit after considerable surgery and of course our thoughts are with them during their recovery period and we're very very glad that they were as lucky as they were to have escaped not not uninjured but to have escaped with their lives but it just made me think about of course a lioness is bigger than a, most human beings much much heavier but it just makes me think about the risks that they have to take with their lives every three or so days three or four days when they go off searching for a buffalo to hunt it is such a dangerous process those buffalo bulls are so powerful and that's why the teamwork is all important between lionesses. And it does happen every now and again that a buffalo go hunt goes wrong and lions are killed. That's one of the potential theories behind the death of one of the Birmingham boys was that he had a collapsed lung from a buffalo hunt. Whether it was a kick or a horn that hit him in the stomach, they are truly powerful creatures. And I find it amazing that lions are able to do this on a weekly basis. The toll it must take on their bodies. They are so phenomenally resilient. Yes, little cubs, and one day you will have to do it too. Now you've got moms to sort you out. But in the next few months you're going to have to learn. And welcome to Louise, who'd like to know a little bit more about these lion cubs. And Louise, you want to know if these cubs are the siblings of the ones that died recently? Yes, they are. Not the Styx cubs that unfortunately succumbed to their mange. These lion cubs, and in fact the adult lions as well, became seriously, I don't think the word infected is the word I'm looking for. It wasn't really infected. But they fell foul of a vitamin deficiency as a result of the fact that the buffalo they were eating was so thin and so undernourished that as a result the lions were short of vitamin E and selenium in their diet and that resulted in something known as white muscle disease which basically caused a complete paralysis of the muscles. And two of our Nkuhuma cubs succumbed two more of them were also very very ill we were extremely concerned about them they were walking around dragging their back legs and the adults also started to show signs of weakness around their hindquarters fortunately they obviously got a buffalo with the vitamins that they needed they got something that managed to fix most of them but for two of the Nkuhuma cubs they weren't so lucky and it was apparently one of the youngest litter part of the youngest litter one of them and one of the oldest lit one of the oldest cubs so that would make them the siblings or cousins of the cubs that died it was heartbreaking for all of us because of course we've followed these cubs since they were very 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 small so and it's an inevitability it's very very unusual for lions to be able to raise an entire set of cubs to adulthood there is a high mortality rate but usually those deaths are caused by male lions or buffalo or another predator not as a result of a basic deficiency in their diet. It was hard to watch. But we comfort ourselves in the fact that all five lionesses came through and most of the cubs as well. And they're looking very happy and very healthy, if somewhat filthy. But at least we know they are eating well. I think it's time for us to say goodbye to our Nkuhumas for now and start the long trek back home. So while I leave the Nkuhumas, 
we'll send you back across to James to find out what he has planned for the last few minutes of the safari.